For the last few months, I've gone through and created a video called Top 5 Apps of the Month. And this month is no different. Now that we're in September and we're the, the year is slowly passing us by, it's time for another one of these videos. And it feels like just yesterday that I did August's version, but there you go. It seems like every time I do one of these videos, I complain about how fast time goes, but what can you do? You can't slow down time. So this month I have five really cool apps to show you. If you would like to see an application that you enjoy on this list sometime in the future, make sure you leave that in the comments section below. It really does help me out because then I don't have to come up with five apps all on my own. It appeases my laziness just a little bit, so I really do appreciate anybody who's given an app suggestion in the past. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I do quite a few of these really cool videos each month and I publish other videos that aren't so cool the rest of the month. So now that we got all that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first app on the list this month is called Font Downloader. And basically what this does is it allows you to go through and download any Google font. So Google has this vast collection of fonts that it uses and allows web developers and such to actually use them on websites. And you can download them from the Google Fonts website as well. But this application allows you to kind of not have to go to the internet and actually order to get these. You can just go through and download them one by one in this application. And there are just a ton of fonts here that you can download. It, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. Now, once you find one you want to download or install, you can do so. You can either install it just by clicking the install button. Now, as far as I know, this will only install for your user. It won't install system wide. If for whatever reason it doesn't install for you, you can go through and download the font as well just to a folder. Now as far as I can tell, it doesn't actually give you the opportunity to tell it where to download. So I'm not actually sure where this thing downloads at, but it does allow you to at least do that. So that is font downloader. The next one is called Obsidian and it was wrecked by and I'm going to butcher your name, I apologize for this, but Githin Manesh. Basically what Obsidian is, is a markdown editor slash note-taking tool, and it is highly extensible. There's a ton of plugins that are, come with it. There's also a community of people who have made plugins that you can go out and install if you'd like. Now, the cool thing about Obsidian is that it just creates markdown files. It actually just literally creates text name dot md files that you can take wherever you want but it looks really nice so it doesn't matter that it doesn't have a syncing capability or any of that stuff because you can just take these markdown files to whatever markdown editor you want and it's pure markdown the things with like vimwiki or zimwiki they use iterations on markdown and what that means is that it's not so easy to take those files elsewhere when you need to I've been having problems with this you know, recently because I've been transferring all my stuff from Zim to VimWiki and they don't use the same syntax. It's just close. And sometimes close just means things break all the time and your syntax and your headlines and stuff like that just doesn't come across. So in this case, it's pure Markdown. If you're into writing with Markdown, this is a great little editor and it's great for note taking. It allows you to create notebooks and tags and all that kind of stuff. There's a ton of settings for appearances and other settings. You can go through and search your notes and all that kind of stuff. So it's a full featured note taking application and it's kind of pretty. So that is Obsidian. The next one on the list is called Tilda. Now, I don't think along the line I will probably feature very many terminal emulators on this list, but Tilda is kind of cool because it's a drop down terminal emulator similar to, to Guake or one of those other ones that drop down from the top. Now, if you're using a tiling window manager, it doesn't work for whatever reason. It comes up as a window. It's possible that I'm missing a setting and well, I can change that setting and then it would work, but I didn't see that. But I like it anyways because it allows you, as long as Tilda is running, to bind it to a key binding. And you can be on whatever desktop you're on. So let's say I'm on my Audacity workspace here and I hit F1, Tilda pops up in the background. Now it's because Audacity is floating that I can't actually see this, but I believe that there's actually a setting in Tilda's preferences here that I can always be on top. 
Let me see here. I think I saw that somewhere. Yeah, it doesn't actually follow that, unfortunately, but uh, that's probably, beca again, because I'm in a tunneling window manager. But while we're here, you can see that Tilt is actually maintained through a GUI settings application or settings panel. And a lot of people like managing their terminal emulators through a, a GUI. And if you're one of those people, Tilda might be a good option for you. I per personally prefer editing my s terminal emulators in a configuration file, but that's just because I'm a big nerd. So, anyways, Tilda's great if you're looking for a drop down terminal emulator that will kind of double as like a scratch pad, which is how I'm using it. Tilda's just kind of amazing. Uh, and that was recommended by Mad Thumbs over on Odyssey. So thank you, Mad Thumbs, for recommending that. The next one on the list is called Stacer. And this was recommended by somebody too, but I didn't write down the name. So I apologize for that. So whoever, you rec whoever recommended this, thank you. Stacer is a system monitor slash system maintenance application. The first screen you're presented with every time you start up the application is a system monitor. And it gives you basic stats on your CPU, memory, disk, network, and all that kind of stuff. But Stacer is more than just that. It will also allow you to go through and turn on and off and disable startup applications. It will allow you to go through and clean different caches and reports and logs and temporary files and your trash. It will allow you to go through and search for files and clean up large files. It will allow you to uninstall programs. It will allow you to monitor ongoing system processes and will show you a history graph of your G CPU, GPU, disk, and memory, and all that kind of stuff. It's really quite a full-featured application for system maintenance, and it's all done in a very pretty package. And it works across pretty much every Linux distribution. I installed this one from uh, the Arch repositories, but I think it's also on FlatHub and Snap, so if you wanted to download it from you know, somewhere else, you could do that as well. And it's really quite cool. If you're interested in... A system monitor or a system maintenance application, I don't think that there's one better than this one. So the last one on the list is called Power Cord. Now, Power Cord is not for everyone. And in fact, I should put a little disclaimer on here that if you use Power Cord, technically you are breaking Discord's terms of service because basically what Power Cord does is it sits on top of the Discord client and allows you to do things. And by things, I mean it allows you to theme it, it allows you to add plugins, and so on and so forth. Now, PowerCord is still in beta, so there's not a lot you can do with it. But there are a ton of CSS themes out there for Discord that are usable by PowerCord to change the way Discord looks. In my case, I've grubboxed Discord. And that allows me to go through with PowerCord and just enable it, and it looks like this now. And it applies pretty much just the uh, whole app wide. Like the whole app now looks like a Grubbox theme. And it's really awesome. Now I featured a in a video, I believe that was deleted, but I don't remember. Uh, I featured a, one called Better Discord you know, a little while ago. And I used that for a bit, but it didn't stay on my system because it used a lot of resources. PowerCord is not like that. It, at least from what I've seen, it doesn't use a ton of CPU usage or it doesn't use a ton of memory. It uses a little bit, but it so it's going to add some overhead to the regular Discord application, but it's not going to add as much as Better Discord did. Now, like I said, PowerCord is in beta, so it's not as full-featured as Better Discord, but it's still really cool, especially if you're like me and do a ton of ricing and you want to make Discord look better than what it normally does, uh, this is a good application for you. So that is... The top five apps for this month. Again, if you have an application that you'd like to see, you can leave that in the comment section below. Also in the comment section below, let me know if there's any of these applications that you've tried or would like to try and let me know why. I'd really like to hear from you. Make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. I really do appreciate everybody who does. It really does help the channel. Thanks a lot. If you'd like to follow me, you can do so at the LinuxCast on Twitter. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Joshua Lee, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, and Mr. Fox. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.